Okay, so let's go into the atmospheric structure and weather of these gas giants. And just starting with this idea of the, um, you know, rotation of the atmosphere. Um, one way that you can think about what this rotation means when you're on the planet is what is the wind speed at that location. So the wind speed is shown here in these images, um, eastward wind speed being positive, westward winds being shown as negative on the graph. And you can see that overall, um, the winds are to the east due to the planet's rotation, um, but that the wind speed varies depending on what latitude you're at on these planets. And in general, it's strongest near the equatorial regions and slowest near the poles. And if you think about like, you know, a rigid solid object like the earth, um, it doesn't have a different speed of rotation. If I spin the orange, the whole orange spins at whatever the rotation rate is, you know, one revolution per every few seconds or whatever I'm rotating it at. But for the gas giants, they don't, they're not a solid body. And so there's nothing constraining them to rotate all at the same speed. So they don't. And so what we see is stronger wind speed, faster rotation at the equatorial regions and then slower wind speeds at the poles. Okay. Um, and so why does the wind speed vary in this kind of jagged way, right? Where it seems like the wind speed kind of correlates with the different colored bands that we see on Jupiter's surface. Um, these things are definitely connected and they're related to the convection of Jupiter's atmosphere. So its light bands are regions where uh, gas is warm and rising up and the dark bands are where gas is cool and flowing down. And so there's, you're basically seeing deeper into the clouds in these dark banded regions whereas the clouds are closer to the surface and therefore appear more bright uh, in these light banded regions. Okay, so you might look at Saturn and say, okay, well, it has a really similar, you know, wind flow pattern as Jupiter. So does it also have these same bands? And the answer is yes, it does. You, they're very faint, but you can see specific um, light and dark bands on Saturn as well. Uh, the difference is though that its clouds are much deeper. And so mostly you're seeing um, you know, there's scattering from the, from the upper atmosphere and we don't see as much of the clouds because they're not as close to the surface. Okay. Um, when it comes to Uranus and Neptune, they have, you know, less of this overall variation in zonal flow. And so this indicates that there's less convection in their interiors. And that makes sense because neither of them have, well, Uranus does not have a large internal heat source and Neptune's is smaller than Jupiter and Saturn's. So more heat, more convection, more pattern in the atmosphere. Okay, so looking at these cloud layers in a little bit more depth, um, the clouds are what is responsible for the colors that we see. So for Jupiter, there are uh, three different uh, cloud layers that can be different colors. And when you look at and see different colors, you're seeing at, into the planet at different depths and seeing the reflectance from these different cloud layers. They're not actually blue and green. This image, I don't know why it shows them in that color instead of their actual colors. Um, but above that, there's a you know, thicker layer of hydrogen and that causes some of that light to be scattered away. And so in the case of Saturn, where the reflected light from the clouds has more atmosphere to travel through until it comes, you know, reflects back off of the planet, it means that it scatters and, and kind of smears out those colors and we don't see as clear of colors, even though it still has the similar atmospheric structure as Jupiter. Um, in the case of Uranus, it has, it's kind of similar to Saturn, a little bit more hazy uh, because of its deeper cloud layers. And for Neptune, you actually do see some um, cirrus clouds near the surface, but other than that, it also appears mostly featureless. Okay, in Jupiter, it, some of these colors that we see, especially in the great red spot, aren't completely understood, um, but it may be the case that there's photochemical reactions, meaning that some of the uh, molecules interact with UV light and get broken up, or they can combine together in the presence of that extra energy. And some of the reaction products lead to different colors than we might expect otherwise, just based only on the clouds. 
So those are important for the particular colors we see on Jupiter, especially at the Great Red Spot. Okay, so here's a closer look of this Great Red Spot. This image uh, color contrast has been enhanced. So you can see all the patterns here that kind of look like, um, I don't know, swirling milk into coffee, right? And so you can see really clearly the effects of that convective mixing in Jupiter's atmosphere. Uh, the Great Red Spot is basically a giant storm. It's a high pressure system, and it's been stable over the entire time we've been observing Jupiter through a telescope. So it's always been visible in human, well, at least in our observing history. Um, but the white ovals, even though they're also high pressure storm systems, these are only stable over about decades. Sometimes they merge together, and sometimes when they do that, they turn brown. Uh, so maybe there's, you know, more chemical reactions that occur, more photochemical reactions that turn them brown after they mix. Um, and it's possible that the great red spot was basically used to be a bunch of these white ovals that merged into this big superstorm. Uh, we don't really know. But the great red spot is losing mass over time as the winds kind of, you know, below it and above it uh, take a little bit of mass as they flow around. And so it's shrinking and it might not be here centuries from now. Okay, Saturn has the same kinds of storms. We just don't see them as clearly because of its deeper cloud layers and it's so overall less um, colorful appearance. Um, but this false color image shows an interesting vortex. This popped up in December, 2010. And by the next January, it had wrapped its way around the entire planet due to the strong equatorial wind of Saturn pulling that storm all the way around. And so it kind of looks like, you know, the serpent eating its own tail. And this eventually led to it just petering out. So it kind of destroyed itself. So these, you know, storm systems are dynamic. They're not just surface features of a planet like the continents of the terrestrials. They're changing and, and complex. Okay. The weirdest feature about Saturn's atmosphere is it has this big hexagon at its North Pole. So this is a polar vortex. Um, there are similar vortex features that get established at the poles of terrestrial planets too. So for example, on Earth, you might have heard of our polar vortex like several years ago, the media got into this because there's essentially um, sometimes the cold air from the poles dips farther down into the northern latitudes giving us extra cold winters. And so this is the same type of vortex pattern. Um, so basically, uh, it's just a pattern of uh, atmosphere, different atmospheric temperatures that dip at different latitudes around the polar features. So on Earth, our polar vortex leads to cold winters. On Saturn, its polar vortex is huge and for whatever reason, um, a hexagon shape. So some researchers have tried to do simulations in supercomputers that mimic this polar vortex. And the most recent ones I've seen get triangles, not hexagons. So we still don't totally understand this feature. Um, recently this year, there's been some you know, new modeling, but it's still all triangles. So yeah, this polar vortex is weird. OK, the same type of storm systems are even found on Neptune. So Neptune, remember, does have a small internal heat source. So it has more convection than Uranus. And therefore, it also has some internal weather. Um, they're very short-lived compared to the giant planets. So this dark spot was, I think, I'm pretty sure this photograph is from 2018. Um, and we don't right now know if that dark spot is still there uh, because we don't have anything in orbit around Neptune right now to radio signals back to us. And the Hubble Space Telescope doesn't point that way that often. So our knowledge of the planets Uranus and Neptune is relatively limited because it's really hard to get spacecraft out there. They have to be really autonomous. They have a really long way to go. It's very cold, so they have to be well equipped with heat. Um, so we just don't know as much about Uranus and Neptune. I feel like they're one of the biggest frontiers in our knowledge of the solar system. Okay. And then finally, here are some, uh, you know, dense regions of methane that have condensed into cirrus clouds on Neptune. So it's pretty cool to see similar cloud patterns on such a faraway planet as we sometimes see in our own sky. <laughs>